Hi, and welcome to lecture nine. In this lecture, we're going to extend our study of regression models from the last lecture, and we're gonna do a neat application of linear regression known as mediation analysis. So to begin, let's talk about an example where we can apply mediation analysis, and then we'll talk about what it really is. So the example is a question that might be interesting to someone designing curriculum, say for graduate school. And the question might be, do prerequisite courses impact subsequent course grades? Uh, an informal way of asking this question is, do these prerequisites that we've assigned for certain courses really matter in the long run? So this is uh, an interesting question, sure enough, and we can answer it using linear regression. So let's get some specific context. Let's consider a regression model where technical writing grade is going to predict a grade in a research methods class. So we're gonna use the symbols X and Y to represent the predictor of your uh, technical writing grade and the outcome or criterion variable of your research methods grade. So we're asking, does this prerequisite writing course impact the subsequent research methods course grade? Now, that's a lot of things to say, so I'm going to use a diagram to help uh, encode all of these things that I mean. That diagram is this. This is a simple path diagram, and what you see is the predictor leading to the outcome. And this little C here, this is going to be a path. This is uh, an effect of, um, this is the effect of the technical writing course on the outcome research methods course grade. And specifically, it's nothing more than the slope of the regression line, uh, which we did last time, and we can certainly do in JASP as well. And in terms of uh, the context of mediation analysis that we're gonna talk about today, this is something that we're gonna call the total effect of X on Y. Now right now, it shouldn't be clear at all why we're gonna call it that, but it will become clear very soon. So instead of doing this by hand, I'm going to go to JASP and I'm going to pull up some data where I have course grades in a technical writing course along with the same students course grades in their subsequent research methods course as well as uh, another variable or two. So let's pop over to JASP and look at that data. So here it is, I'll put a link in the description below so that you can do these analyses yourself. But I wanna pay attention to the first two columns. Here is the writing grade. Now these are on a scale of zero to four, where uh, four is an A, three is a B, all the way down to zero, which is an F. And same thing for the research grades. Now I also have GPA recorded. We'll, we'll get there in just a second. So the first thing we're gonna do is a regression model that captures the effect of the writing grade on the research grade. So let's go to regression and we'll do classical linear regression. Our dependent variable is going to be that research grade and the covariate we wanna choose is simply the writing grade. And now we're gonna get rid of the analysis menu and just look at the results and we can see down here under coefficients that we have a slope of 0.402 uh, on the writing term. So that is the effect or the total effect on the uh, research methods grade. And you, in fact, you can see it is a significant effect. And so we can certainly say that yes, writing matters. So let's go back to the slides and copy this information down. So from JASP, we can see that C path, that slope or that total effect of the predictor X onto the outcome Y is 0 0.402. And from this, we can interpret that writing grade is a significant predictor of research grade. So the prerequisite matters, right? End of story, end of lecture. Well, not so fast. There's another possibility that we should consider, and this is where we're going to get into mediation analysis. So let's consider an alternative model where the effect of this writing grade, the effect that we just saw, right? is mediated, that is partially explained by another variable, particularly GPA. So the model in, in terms of a diagram would look like this. There is a path from X to Y, but it has another path, sort of an indirect route to get from X to Y that goes through a mediator variable M. This is your GPA variable. So this is kind of a standard mediation path diagram. So what, what do we wanna do with this? How do we know if this is a better model? How do we know if GPA is explaining this over and above just the course grade itself? 
Well, that's what we're aiming to do in this lecture today. So let's talk a little bit about notation first. Uh, the notation here, I've got a C prime here. Uh, that's to differentiate it from the C effect that we used on the original path diagram. This C prime is called the direct effect. That is, it's the effect of the predictor X onto the outcome Y after controlling for the mediator variable. So in the context of this problem, this is the effect of the writing grade on the research grade after you control for GPA, okay? And then AB, this path here, if you take this path A and this path B and multiply them, that's called the indirect effect. So this is essentially the effect through the mediator. So the fundamental idea in a mediation analysis is this. Let's see if we can get this all on the screen. The fundamental idea is that mediation occurs when the direct effect, that is this thing right here, after controlling for that mediator is less than the total effect. So remember the total effect was 0 0.402. Let's go back and look at that real quick. Yes, 0 0.402. So what we wanna do is somehow estimate this direct effect. And if that's less than 0 0.402, then that means that we've reduced that relationship once we've accounted for or controlled for this mediator. That is, GPA is mediating the relationship. It's, it's, uh, it's explaining the relationship. So, oh my gosh, this is, this is really cool, right? So now we can assess whether the whether the uh, prerequisite really matters or if it's just simply basically just GPA and it doesn't matter whether we have the course or not, okay? So let's see if we can figure out how that works. So in mediation analysis, we have two goals then that we want to, that we want to achieve. The first goal is to estimate this direct effect C prime as well as the indirect effect AB. And I'm gonna show you how to do that shortly. And then the second goal, uh, just like most of our modeling approaches, and sorry for the uh, lightning strike alert there, let me make that go away. Uh, just like all of our modeling approaches, we always have an estimation component, and then we have a uh, hypothesis testing component. So the hypothesis testing component is this. We wanna test whether mediation occurs. That is, we wanna know whether C prime is less than C. So let's see how we do that, okay? So let's, let's, let's try to achieve that first goal. Let's figure out how to estimate and compute these direct and indirect effects. So it's really actually quite easy, but it involves multiple steps. So let me walk you through those. To do this, we need something that I'm gonna call the fundamental equation of mediation analysis. Basically, this is an equation that relates all of these concepts that we've just now introduced. And the equation goes as follows. In words, it's the total effect equals the direct effect plus the indirect effect. In a sense, it's, it's like in variance. When you, uh, when you do analysis of variance, you uh, decompose the variance into multiple sources. Well, that's what we're doing here. We're, we're decomposing this total effect, the 0 0.402 that we saw originally in our JASP analysis, into two sources the effect directly from the, uh, the predictor to the outcome, and then the indirect effect through the mediator, okay? Now, I'm gonna write this in mathematical form as follows, okay, just using the symbols. So this is gonna be that C equals C prime plus AB. Uh, since I put a box around it and colored it yellow, you should probably uh, know that this is going to be an important equation for us. So let's get into the steps. There are four steps to compute these uh, direct and indirect effects. The first step is to compute the total effect C. Now we've actually already done that. Uh, that was when we did the linear regression of X on to Y. So C was the slope or the effect of X on Y. And we did it a little bit earlier and we got 0 0.402. So that's uh, essentially something you can do without knowing anything about mediation analysis because this is just your typical linear regression slope. Now, that's always the first step. The second step is to start getting the pieces of this path diagram. So the second step is we want to compute the path A. So what is that? Well, that's essentially a regression from X to the mediator. So from the writing grade to GPA. So we're going to do a linear regression from X on to M. And the A path is just going to be the slope or the effect of X on M. So let's go to JASP and do that. 
Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to leave this linear regression here. I'm going to do a new one. I'm going to go to linear regression. And now I want to look at the effect of the writing grade on the mediator. So I'm going to put the GPA mediator as my dependent variable. And my covariate is going to be the writing grade. Okay. And now I'm just going to look for the slope. The slope on the writing grade is 0.244. So I'm going to write that down here in just a second. And I'm also, for reasons that I can't explain just yet, but I will in a few minutes, I also want to record this standard error right here because I'm actually going to use that in a hypothesis test. So I'm going to record 0.027 as well. Okay, so the slope is 0.244, the standard error is 0.027. Okay. Okay. Now that's path A. So path A is 0.244. Now you might guess we're going to compute path B. And that's exactly what we're going to do, path B. Now this is a similar idea. It looks like all you need to do is do a regression from the mediator on to Y. But there's actually more going on here because if you'll notice, Y has two paths leading into it. It has the path from the mediator and it also has the direct path from X. So we need to enter both the predictor X and the mediator into the model. So the way I indicate this is we want to do a linear regression of X and M onto Y. So this is going to be your writing grades and your GPA predicting the outcome of the research grade. And B then is going to be the, the slope or the effect of M, the mediator, onto Y. Okay, let me show you how that works. So we'll go back to JASP. And as usual, we're going to do one more regression. So this time the dependent variable is again the research grade, Y. And I'm going to put both of these covariates, the writing grade and the mediator, into the box. Now I look down here at the output. I've got multiple slopes. The one I want is the path from GPA to the research grade. So that's going to be this slope on GPA, which is 1.300. And I'm also going to record that standard error, 0 .0, or sorry, 0.144. Okay, so go back and we'll write those down. And so there's my path B along with the standard error. Again, I'll need that standard error in a minute. We're almost there. The last thing we want to do is figure out this direct path C prime. So how do we do that? Well, it turns out we don't use regression for this. We simply use the fundamental equation of mediation analysis. So remember the total effect C, remember that original 0.402 that we found, is going to be this part plus this indirect effect. So the direct effect plus the indirect effect. Now we know most of this. The only thing we don't know is C prime. So let's use a little bit of algebra and rearrange this. So C prime is actually just going to be C minus AB. And if I put in what I know, I know the total effect C. I know the indirect effect because I know A and B. So I can find this total effect minus the product of these, which turns out to be 0 0.0848. Look at what has happened here. We originally had an effect of 0 0.402, right? That was the slope or the effect of the writing score on the research grade. Now it has been reduced. Once we've accounted for the mediator, once we've accounted for GPA, it's been reduced to 0 0.0848. That is a big reduction. That is a big mediation. So since this direct effect C prime is much less than the total effect, this is textbook mediation. This tells us that GPA mediates the relationship between writing grade and research grade. Okay, And so that's how you do a mediation analysis. This is actually the mediated effect now or the direct effect. Our second goal after estimating that effect is to test whether that mediation is a significant mediation. Now your intuition probably tells you that's a big reduction going from 0 0.402 to 0 0.08 seems pretty big and I agree with you. But you need to know how is it that you would test whether it's significant or not. So here's how we're going to go about that. Okay. We're going to do this. We're going to do something called the Sobel test. Uh, Sobel was a statistician who wrote a paper in 1982 uh, that explained a way to do this test. And it goes like follows. To test whether C prime, this direct effect, is less than the total effect, it really suffices to just simply test whether the indirect effect, AB, is positive. Right? Because if it's positive, 
then that means we're going to subtract a big amount, a significantly large amount, off of the total effect. That is, we're actually going to do mediation. So just testing whether AB is bigger than zero is enough here. So we're going to call this the Sobel test. And it works like this. It's a null hypothesis test. The null hypothesis is that that indirect effect AB is zero. In other words, there's no mediation. And the alternative hypothesis is that it is bigger than zero. That is, there is a mediation that occurs. And the way we test this is we compute something called this Sobel statistic. And it looks like this. It's a z-score where I take the product AB and I divide by the standard error of that product. And it turns out the standard error, and this is what Sobel showed, is equal to this. It's the square root of all that stuff. But these are all things that we just found in our estimation of the paths in the mediation diagram. We found the, the A path, we found the B path, and we found the standard errors of each of those. So we can simply plug those in and we are in good shape. Now once we do that, uh, this, uh, this z-score is normally distributed, so we can use a normal distribution calculator to compute the uh, path, or sorry, to compute the p-value. So let's do our example. Uh, let's compute first our standard error for the indirect path. And again, this is just a repeat of what the equation looks like. Let's actually put those numbers in. We had recorded those numbers earlier in the lecture, so we've got 0.244 squared uh, for the a path, 1.30 uh, squared for the B path, and then the standard errors for B and A, respectively. And once we simplify all that, that gives us a standard error of 0 0.0497. Now we can plug that into our Z statistic. So we want to compute AB over this standard error. Well, we know A and B, again, 0.244 and 1.3, respectively, so we'll multiply those together. And then we'll divide by this standard error, and we get something pretty big. We actually get 6.38. That's a big z-score. Remember, 1.96 is enough to get you out in the 2.5% tail, so we're way out there. Uh, any normal calculator will show you that that p-value is very, very small, way less than 0 0.001 for sure. So we can say that GPA significantly mediates the relationship between writing grades and research grades. So to answer the first question, does the prerequisite matter? I'm not sure it does, at least on these data. And so this, is a, this, this mediation analysis technique is a good way to test those kinds of questions. I'll end today by uh, just letting you know that there's a guy named David Kinney who has a wonderful website about mediation analysis. A lot of the material that I uh, learned myself originally and used to prepare for today uh, comes from that website. So I certainly encourage you to go there and he has a lot more resources and goes more in depth about mediation analysis. And I'll put a link in the description below. So that's all for this video. Uh, that's all for mediation analysis. So good, good little application of linear regression. So that's it for now and we'll see you at the next video.